This is Jonathan Hansen. I'm the president of both World Ministries International as well as Eagle Saving Nations. Both tremendously led by the Holy Spirit, apostolic, prophetic. We've got to have another great awakening if we want to stop the republic from falling, if we want to save America. My website is worldministries.org. That's worldministries.org. Check it out. Check out Eagle Saving Nations. Join today. Again, we've got to get back to Pentecost, and that's what Eagles Saving Nations is all about. I'm going to speak today on who is the Holy Spirit. This is a subject that could go on every week for a year. I'm not going to do that, but uh, I do want to touch on it. Uh, I believe the baptism of the Holy Spirit as far as uh, Jesus, uh, we'd say the baptism of Jesus is a prototype of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it preceded salvation. You know, Matthew 3, 16 through 17, as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened. He saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my Son whom I love, with him I am well pleased. Again, I'm speaking from the chapel here at World Ministries International. It is a live audience with children. Luke 3, 21 through 22, when all the people were baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form, like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, you are my son, whom I love, with you I am well pleased. Okay, we notice, first, the baptism of Jesus is a two-stage event. Jesus was first baptized in water. Then he was anointed with the Holy Spirit. Uh, second, this two-step process is the usual way Christians encounter the Holy Spirit. First, we encounter him in salvation, then in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to uh, also read a little bit from Billy Graham. My research came, obviously, always from the Bible, but uh, Billy Graham has made some good comments. So is Pastor Luis Angel Diaz Pabon. And, uh, you know, Billy Graham says, It's impossible to understand the Bible, Christian living, the structure of the church, or our own relationship with God without understanding the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not an it. Now, I, my, my wife, I've heard her say that, you know, the Holy Spirit's not an it. It's a person. The Bible says that he is not something. He is someone. He is God. So to understand, uh, we must understand there are three people persons in the trinity not three gods as far as what some people say oh you you worship three gods well we worship one god manifested three ways or three persons god the father god the son and god the holy spirit christian do not worship multiple gods we don't worship multiple gods like in hinduism and other religions god the son or Jesus Christ was God in human form. The Holy Spirit lives inside of us when we accept Christ and helps us to grow closer to God. Now, how does the Holy Spirit work? The Holy Spirit convicts us of sin. You could look that up in John 16, 8. Second, the Holy Spirit gives us new life. You could look that up in Ephesians 2, 1. Also, John 3.3 3 says the Holy Spirit, however, gives us a new life in Jesus Christ. Jesus said no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Three, the Holy Spirit lives in us. You might realize that uh, you were dead spiritually until the Holy Spirit came inside of you. You weren't led by God. But it says, I will put my spirit in you and I will come to live in you. 
You know, that's what the Bible says. 1 Corinthians 3.16, don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? You know, I have said so many times without the Holy Spirit, I don't have a ministry. I travel the nations, I meet with world leaders, church leaders, with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, whether it's prophecy for the nation, for the person, words of knowledge when I get there, counsel and direction from God. Without the Holy Spirit, I don't have a ministry. Fourth, the Holy Spirit gives you power to serve Christ. Acts 1, 8, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witness. So these are things so important to understand. Invisible, but real. The Holy Spirit's probably the least understood person of the Trinity. We probably understand the Holy Spirit the least, some of us, unless you've studied it. Now, I've studied it in depth. We've offered it in our Bible school. Um, the Holy Spirit, to me, is very important. Now, there's a lot of misconceptions. Uh, he's not a force, you know, a force. I don't like that word. You get in this nonsense on television, people who watch movies. He's not a force. Don't, don't associate him with a force because you're watching some stupid movie. Uh, he's not a ghost. He's not a second-class citizen or a replacement God. He's not an it. He's a person. He's God. So I don't like all of these other things that people say. The force is with us. Uh, what, a demon force? Well, it's not, you don't call the Holy Spirit a force. I think he'd be even angry at that. It's vital for the church to know the Spirit, learn to relate to him, and understand how he manifests himself. So, the Holy Spirit, one, is a person. Being a person, the Holy Spirit has feelings. He can be sad, angry. Others can insult him. Blaspheme against him. Isaiah 63.10 Yet they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. So he turned and became their enemy. And he himself fought against them. Some people don't understand. You got God fighting against you. Because you grieve the Spirit of God. Matthew 12.31 and so I tell you, every kind of sin and slander can be forgiven, but blaspheming against the Spirit will not be forgiven. I've said so many times, the Holy Spirit is convicting, 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 convicting. And if you keep rejecting, 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 you have grieved the Holy Spirit, and one of the times he doesn't convict you anymore because you've blasphemed by constantly rejecting him. And if you can't repent of sin... You're the walking dead. That's grieving or blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Do we respond to him? Or do we reject, 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 reject until no longer he convicts? And you can do any sin you want. Acts 7.51, you stiff-necked people. Your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Why did the people of God, Israelites, Hebrews, whatever word you want to say, constantly come under judgment? Why did they live in the wilderness 40 years? It wasn't God's intention. But they kept resisting the leading of the Holy Spirit. They kept resisting the leadership of Moses, who God used. You stiff-necked people. You know, sometimes in today's contemporary world, many pastors could look and say, you stiff-necked people. Man, how long do I have to be with you and teach you and talk, you know? But still, instead of listening, you go to sleep in church. Ephesians 4.30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Do not grieve. Hebrews 10.29 How much more severely 
do you think someone deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified them, who has insulted the Spirit of grace? You know, some people leave the Spirit of grace they get outside of the blood. Only the blood can cover you from judgment. And they totally run away from God now. That's what this is talking about. Insulting the spirit of grace. If you aren't covered under the blood, which gives you the grace to escape punishment, you're damned. There's no eternal security. If you go outside of the blood, don't listen to dispensational nonsense out of some denominations that preach a false grace. Two, Holy Spirit has intentions, shows willfulness and discretion, loves, communicates, testifies, teaches, and prays. Nehemiah 9.20 You gave your good spirit to instruct them. You did not withhold your manna from their mouths, and you gave them water for their thirst. John 15, 26. When the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. You know, Jesus talked about this heavily before he ascended. That I must go so my Holy Spirit, the Comforter, can dwell within you and lead you as I am right now. If a person does not want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, how is he leading you? In many respects, you're leading yourself. You say, God is leading me. Well, you're leading yourself the most part. And you don't totally understand God or his direction. He can't lead you properly. You certainly can't do the will of God with power and authority. That's very clear here. You can't do miracles, but I guess you can talk a little bit about it. It is important to covet and seek the baptism of the Holy Spirit. John 15, 26. When the advocate comes, who I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who goes out from the Father, he will testify of me. Acts 13, 2. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. I don't know how a church makes decisions without the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I don't know how. Here it was very clear. Worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul. People that normally don't get baptized in the Holy Spirit, they don't know the importance of it, seldom do you see them fasting, really. Because nothing, nothing is necessary. I can just pray. Well, you can pray all you want. Probably it's not too effective. There's a, pos a point of fasting and prayer when it's critical. There's a point of the power of the baptism of the Holy Spirit if you want power and authority, if you want to change the nation instead of talking behind closed doors because you're afraid to confront your friend. There's a need for the baptism of the Holy Spirit to give power and authority. We're losing America again because of false teaching or dispensationalists that teach another gospel that nullify the importance of the Holy Spirit. Oh, it's not for today. And you are? It'd be better if you weren't for today either and get a leader that knows the fullness of the Holy Spirit and the power of God. Many times church leaders insult the Holy Spirit and they don't even know it. How? You know, negating it. Rejecting it. Teaching against it. Don't you think that's insulting the Holy Spirit? Don't you think God is angry? When Jesus spoke so strongly about go tarry until you receive it? And yet, you're so arrogant, oh, it's not for today. 
What, what part of the Bibles are you erasing, you little God? And that's what you act like, a little God. I don't like this, so I'll make my own Bible. Romans 8, 26 through 27, in the same way the Spirit helps our weaknesses. We do not know what we ought to pray, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our heart knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance to and with the will of God. A lot of times when I pray for people, if they don't tell me anything, I start speaking in tongues, praying for them in tongues because the, the Spirit of God knows exactly what they need. Maybe they don't really know what's bothering them. Maybe they don't even know they have a disease and don't realize it. They just feel bad. Well, the Holy Spirit knows all things. And if they don't tell you or you don't receive a word from God, I start to speak in tongues. Because God knows. I value the gift of tongues. Romans 15, 30. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the Lord Jesus and by the love of the Spirit to join me in my struggle by praying to God for me. By the love of the Spirit. If it wasn't for the love of God, the Holy Spirit, do we care too much for people? You know, tolerating them is not loving them, and it's certainly not the Holy Spirit's desire to just to tolerate. He wants you to love them. God died for them, gave his life for them, for them as much as for you, no matter how ugly they are. And the more you're led by the Holy Spirit, the more you don't want to protect your own pride and vanity, the more you're willing to get hurt. Jesus was hurt daily. He was rejected daily. He was crucified and killed. What did he say? The very people killing him. Father, forgive them. Yes. This is the love God wants for you and me. You really need to be filled with the Holy Spirit to exhibit that type of love. It's a lack of pride and prejudice. It's love that gives itself to the death. No greater love than to give your life for someone else, the Bible says. For your brother. Who is my brother? It's very clear. Jesus defined it. It's your neighbor. Are you willing to reach out to them? Romans 15, 30, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit to join me in my struggle by praying to God for me. You want somebody that really exhibits the love of God, filled with the Holy Spirit, to pray for you. That's who you really want. You know, it's like a surgeon. Some people say, well, I can just go to any old surgeon. Well, one might kill you and the other might save you. Literally. And I could tell you so many cases. One of the leading causes of death in hospitals are doctors. That's why you have such a high malpractice. They don't know everything. And some are much better than others. Same with a pastor. Some have anointing, some don't. I didn't understand this as a kid. Oh, why, why do they have to travel so far for this person to pray for them? Because the person next door doesn't have the anointing. Doesn't move with the Spirit of God. It's important. 1 Corinthians 12, 11, all these are the work of one in the same Spirit. He distributes them to each one just as he determines. The Holy Spirit was present during Jesus' life on earth. Luke 1, 35, and the Holy Spirit was present during each stage of Jesus' life. When the angel appeared to Mary, the mother of Jesus, he declared, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. I've heard so many dispensationalists say, oh, the Holy Spirit only came in the New Testament baloney. It's in the Bible, old and new. It was one book. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
later on at the baptism of Jesus, which marked the beginning of his public ministry, the Holy Spirit was present and on this occasion could be seen in material form. When Jesus was baptized, he went up immediately from the water. The heavens suddenly opened for him and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming down on him. Matthew 3.16 during his ministry, Jesus taught about the Holy Spirit and had a relationship with him, and he urged his disciples to receive him in their lives. When I ascend, go tarry, don't even try to represent me until you're baptized with my spirit. <clears throat> then I will walk in you and through you and continue to do miracles through your human body. I will speak to you, called the comforter, the Holy Spirit works in the lives of believers. John 14, 16 through 17. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. He is the Spirit of truth. The world is unable to receive him because it doesn't see him or know him. But you know him because he remains with you and will be in you. So Jesus put a lot of emphasis on the Holy Spirit. He was the subject of intense prayer. You know, as I've traveled the nation since 85, people can reject the Holy Spirit all they want, but you'll never prove it to me because he operates through me and I see signs and wonders, words of knowledge, prophecy, miracles. Am I doing it? No, it's God in me. You can't tell me that he doesn't exist or I don't need him. I don't have a ministry without him. I rely on him totally. I don't have a ministry without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit works in the lives of believers. The Holy Spirit was already real and he was about to come. The Spirit dwelled with the disciples, but they lacked having him in, in them. If the Spirit of God was so important to the life of Jesus, how much more so for the lives of believers, you and me? How much more? Jesus then went into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights and was tempted and overcame Satan. We need the baptism of the Holy Spirit to overcome our temptations, and to have victory after victory after victory after victory. To be moving in a spirit-led life, the supernatural. That's when Jesus started his miracles on earth. Came out of the wilderness. Can't you see how he did it? Why don't you think you don't need it? Are you going to be like a Sadducee and Pharisee? Well, I'll just talk a little bit. Yeah, pretty ineffective. You know, if you don't have testimonies, I really don't want to hear you. You say, that's, that's wrong. Well, sorry. I don't think you even know everything you think you know. I think you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit for that counselor to continue to give you direction and wisdom how to rightly divide the scriptures properly. The Holy Spirit... Genesis 1, 2, <clears throat> we find the Holy Spirit moving about the surface of waters. Revelation 22, 17, he will and the bride cry with one voice. From beginning to end, the Holy Spirit has always been active. In the beginning, creating, at the end of the story, tending to us. He comforts us, helps us, guides us, reminds us, teaches us comes alongside of us, counsels us, intercedes, and advocates for us. There is no area of life in which the believer does not need the help of the Holy Spirit. I need Him in everything. So do you. Unless you want to become very critical, a critical, judgmental Pharisee.
Without a life full of the Holy Spirit, it's impossible to build the body of Christ. Impossible. The gospel, with no emphasis on the Holy Spirit, is flat. Go to these mainline churches. I mean, it's flat, flat, flat. Dead. And filled with sin. See, the Holy Spirit convicts of sin. They accept alternate lifestyle and everything else. It's the Holy Spirit that convicts. You say, why do they tolerate sin? The baptism isn't in those churches. So what is? A critical spirit. You can't build the body of Christ without the Holy Spirit. The gospel with no emphasis on the Holy Spirit, once again, like I shared, is flat. It's dead. In certain moments when there was a special manifestation of God, the New Testament emphatically states that the partakers were filled with the Holy Spirit. This was the experience of many, like John the Baptist, full of the Spirit in his mother's womb. Luke 1, 15. Elizabeth, when Mary greeted her. Luke 1, 41. Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, when he prophesied. Luke 1, 67. Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit, was led by the same Spirit into the desert. Luke 4, 1. The disciples were filled with the Spirit in the upper room. Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit, stood up and preached on the day of Pentecost, Acts 2.14. The young Stephen, full of the Spirit, saw the glory of God when he was stoned, Acts 7.55-56. If he wasn't filled with the Spirit, I doubt if he would have been stoned because he would have probably denied Christ and ran away. Paul, inspired by the Spirit, rebuked a sorcerer, Acts 13.9-11. And the Holy Spirit works in world evangelism. John 16, 8, when he comes, he will convict the world about sin, righteousness, and judgment. The Lord used the legal term convict in order to highlight that even if a man can point out an error, it's the Spirit that brings conviction. Breaks the yoke, sets the captives free. He shows the offense reveals the foolishness of sin, points out the consequences, convinces of guilt, and leads the sinner to repentance. It's the church's greatest ally. Without the help and filling of the Holy Spirit, the evangelistic task of the church will fail. Ladies and gentlemen, you need the Holy Spirit. You need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. My phone number is 360 629 5248, website worldministries.org, worldministries.org. Go to my website, join Eagle Saving Nations. We've got to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit filling the stadiums again today. God bless you.